to send anything. Okay, so introduction to SLURM. Uh, we will repeat shortly how to access the discovery cluster, what software are available, what is SLURM, how to create a job and submit it, what is SLURM script, how to request resources, how to track your job. And also we will do some practice examples. So the first thing is how to access the discovery cluster. And uh, we already know how to request an account from previous presentations. Okay, so it is under requests and then account request. Here, it's a simple form that needs to be filled in with your name, affiliation with NMSU, and some uh, data use agreement, meaning that you cannot store sensitive data on the cluster. Uh, after that, you will go to Canvas course, a short one where you will learn about basics of Linux and basics uh, of HPC. Uh, but the first thing, uh, after that is after you get your credential, after you get access to discovery, you will need to connect to VPN if you're accessing off campus. And now we're all doing that. So you need to connect to VPN and download and install PuTTY. You're accessing by using discovery.nmsu.edu and we log in with our my NMSU credentials. It's the same, no need to memorize additional password. And now we're in. Another thing you can use is WinSCP that will give you the feel as you're working in a Windows environment. So you can easily copy, paste, move your documents. And again, you use your MyNMSU credentials. Okay, I'll use it later. So the first thing we want to do, so we cannot, uh, for example, for our research problem is too complicated, too demanding for our, for our laptop computer or desktop computer, whatever. And we want to solve our problem faster or we want to treat larger problems. And Discovery is an HPC cluster, meaning high performance computing. It has a collection of computers or nodes that are working together, they're communicating. Uh, that's the real benefit of using an HPC. So Discovery is located at NMSU. It's free for students, faculty, and staff. And um, after you get your X, your account and everything, installed like Patty and Win SCP, uh, you need a software to solve your problem. Uh, first, you can use module 
avail, meaning for, short for available, to see which software are available. Module is actually a software. Uh, it's an interface to different software packages. You have different software, you have different versions. And it will change your environment, the environment where you're working in, uh, to include the path to software. But you don't have to uh, wait for download and installation. It's, it's really quick and simple. You just need to select which one you want to use. You can see that there are uh, these in brackets. That's the default version. But you can select some other if you need to work that. <laughs> okay, we have lots of software. However, uh, if your software of choice is not among them, you can request your software by going to hpcnmsu.edu and clicking software request and filling in this form. And then we can see what we can do with that. So how to list versions, different software versions. For example, module, spider, and then Python will give us different software versions. If you want to learn more about particular version, we can use that. And it will automatically give us command how to load it. It's module load, and then the name of the module. So when we list loaded modules, we can see that we have loaded this one. Now let's load another one. Now list it, we again have some additional. You can learn more about the module by typing module help. If you want to unload it, you would do module unload and then the name of your module. If you want to unload all modules, you would use module purge. So if I do that, for example, this one, now I have only four, but if I do model, module purge, I have none, no modules loaded. So let's load it again. Okay, now, now they're back. So when you access a cluster system, you're accessing a login node. You just entered your MyNMSU credentials and now you land it here. This is your computer. Uh, all the jobs are run on compute nodes. So compute nodes are used for computational tasks. And in theory, you should never have any need to access any of the individual compute nodes of a cluster system. And so how do you run your job? You're using Slurm, meaning job scheduler. Slurm is an in intermediary between the login nodes and compute nodes. This is the getaway for the users on the login nodes to submit their jobs to the compute nodes, which will process it. So let's talk about Slurm now. Modern cluster systems often incorporate a very important concept, and that's a scheduling system, Slurm. Its functional purpose is to eliminate the need to know what individual compute nodes are doing. It aggregates data, it monitors the system, 
and it gives you an accurate mm -hmm. and up to date picture of what resources are available and where. So it is open source software and it is installed, for example, in many of the top 500 supercomputers. And uh, we talked in the previous presentation about Slurm and we compared it uh, to the restaurant hostess, uh, which, for example, you arrive and you ask for a table for three persons and uh, you will need to wait until all three chairs are available. Even if two are available, you will have to wait. And so you have to choose to request your resources wisely, not to ask for too much if you don't need it, because it increases your chance of running your job sooner. You can only run 10 jobs at a time, uh, but you can submit as many as you want. So you can submit as many as you want, uh, but only 10 uh, will run after the first one finishes, another one the 11th job can run. So basically you can submit uh, your job on Friday and maybe you will get your results on Monday. You don't need to do anything. Slurm does the entire scheduling and everything so you don't have to worry. But uh, writing the Slurm script is the important part and we want to learn that here. It consists of four parts. Uh, the first one is hash, it's called the hash bang or she bang. And this command uh, tells the shell to interpret, interpret and run the slurm script. And this line should always be added at the top, at the very top of your slurm script. The second part is resource request. Uh, and in this section, we specify which resources we want for a job. We inform Slurm about the name of the job, output file name, uh, amount of RAM, number of CPUs, number of tasks, how much memory we need, and, and so on. The third part is where you load your software. For example, here is Python. And only after that, you specify the list of tasks that you want to execute. And this is how it looks like when it's combined. So we have all four parts. Yes, note that the first line is a comment here. Okay, so how to write it? There's an easier way because we have a slurm generator so for example do this it's my job name Uh, here we have a default version uh, for names, but let's change it to job name dot out. Here are different partitions that you can use. For example, we have three tasks, 16 threads, and we need 700 megabytes per CPU. Here we have max time. Uh, so here are days, hours, minutes, and seconds. For example, for our jobs in this workshop, we will usually need up to 10 minutes, not more. Uh, what else? Yes, your email address. I will enter my email address. And I want Slurm to notify me when my job begins, ends, or aborts. Aborts meaning I don't want it to, to end, but there is some error, obviously. And this is the result. This is our Slurm script. 
So basically, you don't need to think much about how to um, define everything. It will be done automatically. And here is what we got. Of course, in, in these comments, you have explanations uh, for each. Name for your job, name for your output, number of tasks to run, and so on. So let's see, job name specifies the name for the job allocation. And this name will appear along with the job ID number when queuing your job. The default is the name of the batch script or just as batch, of course, that will be your default name, but you, it's much better if you define it. It will be easier for you. Output file name. It instructs Slurm to co connect your batch script. That's your uh, initial script that you're running, batch script. Uh, to connect it to some output name, name of your output file. And if not specified, you saw it already has some default name. Partitions. Uh, you request a specific partition for the resource allocation. It can be normal, GPU, debug, and so on. And if you don't specify it, the default partition is normal. If you want to debug your code, you could use debug, and so on. <laughs> Number of tasks. Uh, this option advises uh, that job steps uh, will be run. Um, for example, I have three tasks here, and I will explain later with an example what that means. But um, for example, if uh, I need to do three different jobs, parts of my analysis, before I do the fourth one, uh, I can combine these three and do them at the same time to save time. Okay. Memory for CPU is uh, the minimum memory required for allocated CPU. And uh, we strongly advise users to specify this because if you don't, it, the default setting is 500 megabytes. And if you, if your job, your job might fail if you don't specify what you need, or you might wait longer. So always try to uh, request only as much as you need. It's the best option. Okay, time max time. I, I put here 10 minutes, but that, that sets a limit on the total runtime of the job allocation. So uh, this means if the requested time limit exceeds the partition's time limit, the job will be left in a pending state. The time limit of zero requests that no time limit be, will be imposed. So uh, your script uh, needs to have time specified and jobs that do not specify a time will be given a default time of one minute after which the job will be killed. So you don't want your job to be killed. So it's always better to specify your time. Okay, here you enter your email address and select job events that you want to be notified of. Now let's try one practical example. I will create <clears throat> a directory here. And call it practice one. <clears throat> And I want to create a script. 
Python script. And here in our handout, we copy it. And this is our this is our script. It actually calculates the greatest Fibonacci number up to some value. Um, let me explain Fibonacci number first. I'm sure you saw this somewhere. Okay, so the first value will be one, and then again, uh, one, because one plus zero is one. So you uh, sum two previous values. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus three is five, and so on. So now we want to, to find the largest value up to 100. For example, from this slide here, we see that it is uh, 89. If we want it to be under 200, we should get 144, and so on. So let's save this script. And see what we have so far. Okay. Now let's make it executable. So it will automatically change its color to green. That's what we want. Now, let's go to our Slurm script generator. And let's enter script1.sh. That's our Slurm script. Let's create our output file, maxpip. Let's use normal partition for 10 minutes. That's OK. Memory for CPU, let's put 100 megabytes. We have a single task and one CPU, and we have our email. OK, we're good. And this is our script. We select everything. And then we create our script one sh file and paste it here. So let's load module first. Module load Python. And what else? We need to insert our code. We want to run our code by using srun and then Python script, and here we want to enter our arguments. So for example, we want to find the greatest Fibonacci number up to 100. And let's save it here. Okay. So let's submit our job. We're using gas batch script1.sh. This is what we're running, our script1.sh. Oops. Mm -hmm. I didn't call it properly. I missed my T, never mind. Yeah, it doesn't have. Okay. So now I submitted my job. And if I type SQ space U dash U, and then my username, my username is Iskra. This part here. Uh, 
I can see that my job is already done, but let's see the output. So we got a new text file, the output file, and let's see what's inside. Which version? Something changed from yesterday. What's wrong with version? Yeah, give me one second. Because I did the same thing yesterday and it worked. Okay, two seven one one. See what's the problem. Can you maximize the screen? Okay. Exit. Okay, exit. Hold on. Uh, do an LS. Oh, okay. I got it. Do an LS. Okay, go to the uh, S batch script command, VA script one dot SH. I don't know, VA just open the, don't submit the job. VI. 
or nano to open the script uh -huh. yeah open yeah so in the strand command change the script one dot py to script dot py the file name is wrong uh yeah it should be script dot py not script one script I open my it should be script, yeah. One is and also take that one out. Yeah. It's just script dot Python in the Eastern command. I have to change now. I think I made a mistake here naming this one. No, no, but, but, no, no, no. The, see, the the problem is the name of the Python file is script dot py. It's not script one dot py. So it's looking for that file to open the slum. It, it could not find the file. So you need to change the name of the uh, file from script1.py to script.py. Just take that one out in the S. -rent. No, but it's, look. You see, this one yeah. has, huh? Yeah, it, it doesn't have anything. Okay, okay, okay. Doesn't have one. Yeah. Great. It found the problem. Okay. Okay. Now mm -hmm. the greatest number is eighty nine. You have to be careful with these mm -hmm. names. Again, the good thing is that I got emails when my job began, ended, and so on. Okay. So here, slides batch again. And ask you, mm -hmm. uh, we will get different information. Uh, and we will see it later, but this command, ask you, gives us information on our job. If it is pending, completing, if it's completed already, if it's running or it failed. Mm -hmm. We'll see it for some a little longer jobs. This one is too quick. So information on available resources, before we submit the job, we want to know what resources are available. And that's S info. And it will show you different partitions, uh, time limit, availability, uh, state, number of nodes available, and specifically which nodes are available. Uh, So time limit, this is the maximum job execution vol time. This is seven days and one hour. Uh, so you cannot request more than that. If you're debugging your code, you can use up to an hour. And it's a good choice to use 
this partition if you're debugging because uh, these partitions can easily be available and you can complete it quickly. If you want to terminate your job, you would type S cancel and then the name and then your job ID. See here, we submitted job number 264937. So you would just type S cancel and then the, this job ID, this number. If you want to exit. Another thing is, show you here. We can get information on our jobs running by using guest control show job ID and then enter your number. Also, you can see completed uh, job statistics. Let's try that. Do uh, let's do this one. Two six four nine three eight. Okay, and it tells us the state, it's completed. <clears throat> there is no exit code for the last one. So no error, it ran on a normal partition and exactly what it did. What's the name of my batch script, what I used and so on. This is my job. Let's try another example. Let's create a new folder, practice two. I will be more careful now with typing. And we want to create a new script. Let's try a C code now. Script two dot C. Here is our handout. Make sure that you copy the entire thing. Okay. Let's compile it. So what does this script do? Uh, it sleeps for some time. You enter two arguments. Uh, and then after it sleeps for some time, it calculates your input multiplied by two. You will see when we complete it. Now let's create the Slurm script again. You're doing dot sh, and let's go to the Slurm script generator. So it's script two, uh, output two. Normal partition. Let's do five minutes. This is also a simple task. 100 megabytes should be now. Let's put the default version. Okay. And now we copy this. Okay. So we need to load our module. Module load. And we need to run. S run script two. And then we need to enter two arguments. Let's do five and 21. That's for two numbers. 
Okay. As batch script two dot sh. Okay, we submitted our job. Okay, it's pending currently because we are waiting for resources. It's running a normal partition. Now let's try this S control command. Show job ID and our job ID is 264. Nine four two. Mm -hmm. So it will give us some information on our job, lots of details. Mm -hmm. If you want to cancel it, we will just type S cancel and then our job ID number. But let's not do that now. Let's repeat our co command SQ. And we will see that our job is not on the list anymore. It's probably already done. We have our output. Let's see it. Okay, it told us that it is thinking really hard for five seconds and then it calculated 42. So you remember we entered two values, five and 21. Therefore, it was, it was thinking really hard for five seconds, and then it multiplied 21 by two, and we got 42. Okay. Now let's do the third one. So I just want to show you how easy it is to submit your job, and you get used to it. Oh, it's MATLAB. Okay. Let's create another folder. Practice tree. And let's create our third script. MATLAB script. So let's go to our, okay, it's a really short code. It's creating random matrices uh, with integers and saving our output. Okay. Now let's create our Slurm script. That is age. Job script gener Slurm script job generator. Let's put the tree. Output tree. Normal five minutes. That's good. 700 megabytes. And this is our script. We simply copy it and add the missing parts. We need to mo uh, load our module. and run it. Let's see if it will work. Mm -hmm. 
check. Okay, it's running. Mm -hmm. Note C6. And we got our output. Maybe we should change the version for MATLAB. Twenty twenty A, okay. running. On a note C12. Okay, let's see. Okay, it generated mm -hmm. our matrix. And we got our output. Now. Okay, so there are two ways to run your job. And since you're working on such a powerful computer, you should utilize running jobs in series or in parallel. It's the best way to take advantage of the cluster and you could save even more time. So if you have task one and you have to complete that part, step one, uh, and you have to wait for the results uh, of that one, before you continue with step two, you are doing it in sequence, meaning in series. So first one has to end before you continue to job two, to task two. However, if you can do at the same time two tasks, that's running tasks in parallel. So you're saving time. And before you submit the job for, for batch processing, it is important to know what the requirements of your program are so that it can run properly. So there are unique requirements for each program, each workflow. And keep in mind that while increasing the amount of compute resources, 
your request may decrease uh, may increase the time it takes to run your job. Uh, so also uh, your job might wait longer uh, if you request too much. So multi-process program. It's number of processes, number of tasks. Uh, is completed uh, out of several tasks. And in slurm terminology, a task is an instance of a running program. So as I mentioned, steps. And if your program supports communication across computers, or you can plan on running independent tasks in parallel, you can request multiple tasks. So let's try that. First, let's run in serial two sequential jobs. Okay, we have an example here. <clears throat> Let's create a new folder. Okay, so let's create a file called ntss.sh. That's actually number of tasks for serial execution. Okay, now let's copy. So note here that we have one task that we are running, that uh, first we're sleeping for 10 seconds, then we're sleeping for 20 seconds, and then we present our host name. So this script will initiate the sleep command, then uh, more sleep, and then print the host name of the compute node that executed the job. Now, let's save this. And let's do as batch command. Okay, we submitted our job, but let's see our statistics. Okay. We have this commands just simply need to change your job name and my job name is 246980 okay so here okay, it's still running uh so we have here uh we specified the number of tasks uh we have three steps but, uh, okay, let's wait a little longer. Okay. So take a look at this part. Uh, this is start time and end time. So our first part started at 4.50 and ended at five. Then it started at five, ended at 520, then it started at 520 and completed instantly. But what happens, so we're doing serial execution. However, if we change number of tasks to two, every command will be executed twice. So let's do as touch. Okay. 
and let's see what's going on. Let's wait a little longer. So here, uh, again, these, uh, each step starts at different times sequentially. Okay. So what if we do parallel? Uh, let's create a new one, ntp.sh. Number of tasks parallel. So what is going on now? Again, we want to sleep for 10 seconds, then sleep for 20 and print host name. However, we have this ampersand symbol at the end of every command. So it will run simultaneously. We also have three tasks and here we specified three number of tasks. However, at the end, we have command wait. And this one is, this one is very important because if you, if you don't use it, your job could be uh, killed because one of your tasks is done. So try to wait. Let's run this job. Okay. Now let's see what's going on. Still running. So also note here that the total number of tasks in the job steps must be equivalent to the number of tasks value. So that's why we used three. So number of tasks three, and then we have these three steps. But what is the difference between this one and the previous run. Note the start time. They all start at 9.50, for 9.50, but end at different times. So this shows us that they're parallel. One more thing. Let's do multiple arguments. Okay. Let's go back. Yeah, let's see. I wanted to show you. Okay. So this is the first one we did with n tasks one. Let's do it again.
Okay, let's wait. Okay, so this, this was the first one where we start at different times in series. And we got our output, that's this one, name of our job, 264. Okay, let's see what's inside. You see how it printed our host name twice. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned, that we used number of tasks too. We used two tasks. That's why it completed all these commands twice. And that's why it printed our host name twice. On the other hand, this is a parallel one. It printed it once, but it slept for 10 and 20 seconds and print, did the printing at the same time in parallel. Another thing we can do is uh use multiple arguments so for example okay let's go back to our practice one that's our fibonacci number uh but let's create a new script for multiple arguments, different task batch. Okay, now let's copy this. Again, we have our job name, we have our output. Now it's dot out. Okay, so we'll know what we got. We are using four tasks because we're uh, using multiple arguments. So you remember that we have uh, greatest Fibonacci number up to 100. Now we want to execute it four times to find four different numbers up to 90, up to 20, up to 30, and up to 10. And here again, we have ampersand and we have wait command. That's important. So let's try that. The thing is, just one thing because of my typing. Oops. I want to change this. Okay, now I want to submit my job. And so it's num job ID is 264984. Let's use the uh, command. Okay, let's change the number. Okay. So we requested, we have four tasks, and here they are. All started at the same time and ran simultaneously. So we executed this script with multiple arguments, but we did it in parallel. So let's see what we have here. So this one, max pip text, that's for, from before, and is the new one. Let's see what's inside. Out.
and just script. Okay. Now let's do as batch. And let's see what happened. Let's change the job name. Okay. It again ran, started at the same time. Out. Okay. Now it did it properly. So we have four different out results. Greatest Fibonacci number up to 20, up to 90, 30, and 10. So that is what we got. However, as you noticed, you have to be very careful <laughs> with your names. And you can learn more about all this uh, after you request your account, after you go through Canvas course, uh, there is also a way to contact us. Here, you can use hpcteam at nmsu.edu or go to our website. You can request different software. You can find the documentation also. Uh, what are the notes? Here is also a user guide. How to log in. How to use as batch script and everything else. How to specify number of tasks and so on. But if you want uh, to run, I skipped this part for a reason. Okay, threads per task. Uh, this part will be uh, presented uh, in future workshops, how to parallelize and how to how to uh, use discovery as best as you can, use its resources. The best way is always uh, to run your code in parallel uh, and to do everything automatically because you will have more time and everything will be quicker. So try to use this Slurm script generator uh, and try everything that I did today, but without the typing mistakes. And you should easily know how to submit your job. So thank you very much.